Before we start, how many people know there are referral guidelines to the Ocular Oncology? Does everybody know that, or is it news to all of you? Or uh... well, oh well, that's fine. So nobody knows. I just thought if, if everybody knew, then I would have to sit down again. Oh yeah, you can hand them out there. Sorry, such. I thought we f forgot we had those. Well, you might be surprised to hear that there, there are referral guidelines um, to be the four uh, oncology centres. Uh, includes Glasgow in that, uh, although they do have their own funding arrangements. They're slightly different for the, for the Scottish service. You'll have seen some of these this morning, I apologise. I'll try and skip through them, but if I skip through them too fast, then we'll be, we'll be finished before we've even started, I think. So. Oh, said that this morning. Okay. Uh, I didn't realise we'd have quite the same crowd this afternoon. So anyway, when you're thinking about referring someone to, to one of the centres, uh, what do we want to see? Well, ideally, we don't want to see that. Okay. A little choroidal nevus, which as I said earlier on affects about 5%, but we do want to see these, of course. Okay. <laughs> Good to race through these now, aren't I? Um, as I said earlier this morning, uh, nevi are very, very common. They affect 5% of the population, okay? So we really don't want to see 5% of the population coming through the clinic. Um, they tend to be small, though they're less than a couple, usually two, three millimeters or less in diameter, usually around the posterior pole, around the optic nerve, around the macula, okay? Um, usually grayish in color, they're not black. If it's black, it's, it's uh, something else, probably a chirpy. And as I said earlier, uh, if they've got drusen on the surface, then it shows they've been there a long time, which is always good, okay? But they're very, very variable, okay? There's a nevus, sorry, it's a poor picture, but you can just get the impression of a greyish thing sitting there inferior to the nerve, okay? So if I saw, you know, if you had one of those in your clinic, what I'd do is take a photograph of it, uh, and I would discharge them back to the optician, okay? The problem with these is that um, you often get a letter saying uh, this was not there at the last examination a year ago, okay? Uh, take that with a pinch of salt. Uh, what I would, I would rewrite that and say it wasn't noticed at the last examination a year ago, okay? Uh, I'm not being nasty, but, you know, particularly with an undilated pupil, uh, it, they're very easy to miss, okay? Uh, I've had patients who, I shouldn't admit this to you, but I've had patients who I've monitored for five or six years with a melanoma in one eye and then I've detected another nevus in the other eye and I'm sure it's been there all along. It looks like it's been there a long time. If you don't catch it in the, in the light, you don't see it, okay? Melanoma though is a different uh, kettle of fish, very, very rare, uh, affects five to eight or 10 per million per year. As I say, most of them are at the, uh, in the choroid at the, the posterior pole, uh, a small number more anteriorly and on the iris. So there you go, you saw that picture this morning. Um, uh, this is after it, it grew after a few months monitoring because the patient preferred it, okay. So I'm just gonna skip through because I think, you know, hopefully you heard some of this this morning, okay. So, to try and make life slightly easier uh, for, for, for you as, as clinicians, uh, there's, a national commission, uh, there's a national ocular oncology group, uh, which is basically the four centres uh, with uh, representatives of uh, what used to be known as NSCAG, keeps changing its name, uh, the National Subspecialty Commissioning Advisory Group. They're the people who pay for all the ocular oncology services, and they also fund the national ocular pathology centres uh, separately as well. So uh, we, we do quite well out of, uh, of NSCAG, or NCG as they are now, because they cover both sides, okay? And uh, the, the four centres wrote uh, some, in fact it was mainly Bertel who wrote them. Bertel's great, he writes all the things, uh, we just have to sort of sit back and sign them off at the end. Um, uh, put together some guidelines for uh, referring to the centres. They're on the college website, they're not necessarily that easy to find. Um, if you go on the professional side of it, uh, under clinical guidelines, you will find them down the side. But they, 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 oh, well, I was going to say something about the college website, but I better not. It's not perhaps the easiest to navigate around. So, after a bit of preamble in the clinical guideline, in the yeah the referral guidelines, uh, it gets to who should you refer to uh, the centres. Basically. Uh, any primary intraocular tumour other than a nevus, okay? So that assumes that you're, you can, you're happy to distinguish between a nevus uh, and a, a melanoma. Any other intraocular metastatic tumour, okay? So a tumour that's come from, say, a breast cancer or lung cancer, if you think that uh, our input is required. Some, uh, many patients, unfortunately, develop secondaries in their eye from other tumours, 
and they don't all need to come to us, okay? Some uh, oncologists are happy to treat them directly. Many of them are treated in medical retina clinics and that sort of thing. But we do see uh, quite a few. I saw a chap yesterday who had a primary lung cancer, quite an extensive secondary in his eye. So if you need us, send the patient along. As Sarah uh, alluded to earlier on, intraocular lymphoma is a very tricky problem and uh, really should ideally be managed uh, in an ocular oncology setting. The main problem is the diagnosis of it, more than anything, all right? Uh, treatment's not exactly easy, but the diagnosis is uh, particularly tricky. So if you're thinking of an intraocular lymphoma, uh, please send them along. So it's a little bit busy, this slide. Okay, so if you, if you think there's a tumour there, um, as I said before, that's what we're happy to see. If you're looking at a mole, okay, um, think about this, this combination of features. If they've got one of the following features, if it's thicker than, say, two millimetres, this assumes you have ultrasound, and not all departments do, clearly if there's a collar stud appearance to the tumour, like you saw in that previous melanoma, you need to send it, and if there's documented growth, okay, going back to what I said before, Documented growth without being patronising means you've got a picture there and then it's got bigger on there. Okay, not we didn't see it last time, and then, so we do get quite a lot of uh, what turned out to be Nevi sent in, um, uh, where it was saying we've not seen this before. Can you give us a second opinion? Whereas really, if you can follow the guidelines, okay, it will give you some uh, reassurance perhaps that it's not perhaps as urgent as, as you first think. Or secondly, if you've got two of the following. Um, a slightly elevated lesion, uh, one and a half millimetres or more, orange pigment. To me, I must admit, if you see orange pigment, send it along, okay? Orange pigment is the most important feature that you'll see in melanomas. The others uh, are relatively, in my mind, relatively less important, uh, but any two of the following thickness, orange pigment, significant fluid or symptoms, okay? So there's a, a colostrum melanoma, as you've seen three times now, so you'll be well aware of this particular colostrum melanoma. And of course, documented growth, as I showed you earlier on. Okay. If I must admit, if I, if you you know if if you saw that, okay, I would hope that people would recognise it as a melanoma with the orange pigment. But if you are uncertain and the patient was perhaps reluctant to travel, you know, potentially a couple of hundred miles to get to one of the centres. I don't think there would be any danger in taking a photograph and watching some. I wouldn't criticise anyone um, for watching for a short period of time before sending them on, okay? Iris tumours are a little bit more tricky uh, in the sense that they cause relatively little harm, okay? Uh, but for, for guidelines sake, um, they say that if the tumour is greater, the iris mark is greater than three millimetres in diameter or is markedly elevated, it's always difficult to know what they mean by that, or if it seems to be causing a secondary glaucoma or a localised cataract, or if it's invading the angle. Okay? The reason I put that caveat in there is that, as I said to you earlier on, iris melanomas only uh, account for about 5% of all melanomas, uh, so they're that bit rarer. But also, the metastatic rate from an iris melanoma is very low, okay? Uh, it's stated as being 3% uh, with a, a simple, uh, simple if there's such a thing, iris melanoma, and about 10 to 13% if the pressure's up. I have to say, in 14 years, I haven't seen a single case of iris melanoma that's developed metastases. So, I don't particularly worry about iris lesions, okay? It doesn't mean you can't send them along for an opinion, um, but uh, I, I don't get so worried about iris lesions. It's a dreadful picture, I'm afraid, or it's not showing up. So this one is sent along. You see, that is in the angle and, and could quite rightly be sent along um, uh, according to the guidelines. But that's a simple nevus, and it has been watched for quite a few years, and it's never changed. Okay. Conjunctivas um, tend to cause the most uh, aggressive response from ocular oncologists. Um, I know Ian has a habit of standing up, Ian Rennie has a habit of standing up and doing what he calls his hellfire lecture, where basically if you touch your conjunctiva then, you know, uh, you're damned, okay? Um, it's, a, it's a slightly difficult problem with the conjunctiva because it's accessible and it's visible, so a lot of things get picked up relatively early, okay? 
What this is essentially saying is if you've got a nodular tumour, particularly if it's got feeder vessels or there's other diffuse pigmentation around about, then certainly think about sending it across to us. If it's been there a long time, clearly, or it's got clear cysts in it, uh, cysts generally mean nevus, okay? So it uh, doesn't mean that nevi can't turn melanomatous, but cysts are a reassuring sign. I think the only thing I would say about the guidelines in that case is try not to do biopsies if you can. It, it, it seems helpful at the time, but if you suspect it's a, a particularly a melanoma, then send it off intact, okay? The problem with doing biopsies is uh, twofold. It may not go to an ocular pathologist and be misinterpreted, but more importantly, I think sometimes, you do, you, the bio, I've seen patients where the biopsy was taken in March, the report was issued uh, at the end of the month, it then sat on, got lost in the post, and the consultant realises at the end of May, and then sends you to see, um, to see us in, uh, in July or June. And there's been four months after that tumour has been sliced up, and you don't know what it's doing in the meantime. So ideally, if you suspect it to be a tumour, um, then send it to us intact. Send us photographs if you wish, you know, if you're uncertain. I don't have any problems about receiving photographs of, of uh, lesions and then trying to advise on that. You can't always give advice on the basis of a, of a photograph, but uh, it, can, it can save the worry. Okay? Here's a case in point about uh, who um, reviews the sample. This doesn't show up brilliantly, but this uh, lady had this huge pigmented mass, big feeder vessels, variable pigmentation. She had it removed 10 years ago and it, was, it, lo it looked like this on three separate occasions, okay? Um, it was biopsied and reported as uh, a nevus. Uh, it, it actually, she actually had an excision biopsy uh, at that point. It then came back and uh, again, she'd moved by that stage and there was, there was no uh, search or they couldn't get hold of the original biopsy. Again, it was reported as a nevus. Third time round, She's got this, okay. Now when we managed to track down the original biopsies, it was melanoma right from the beginning. Um, and the bottom line is, nevi don't keep coming back like that, okay. So I know it's a bit aggressive, but uh, you don't see too many like that. Diffuse pigmentation, as I said before, uh, uh, PAM, whatever you want to call it. Um, when it's as extensive as this, is quite, uh, quite worrying. Uh, in this sort of situation, we would want to, to take some map biopsies and send it to, uh, to our ocular pathologist for their assessment. Finally, who not to refer. I'm, I'm always a bit wary about saying who not to refer. I would say to you, if you're worried about something, then send it along, okay? Um, or at least send a picture. Um, but ideally, who we don't need to see are obviously things like chirpies, hypertrophy of the retinal pigment epithelium, Simple nevi, uh, by that I mean if they're small uh, and flat or only minimally raised, and particularly if they've got drusen on the surface. The UK, sorry, the, the English centres, strictly speaking, don't see eyelid tumours or orbital tumours. Uh, the Scottish service do, because they have a separate funding arrangement. Yeah, so there you go, there's a few examples. There's a chirpy, you can't see it at all, sorry about that. Well demarcated, very, very black. The thing about chirpy is they, because they have the lacunae in the centre, it can look like orange pigment, okay? So they, I can understand why they're mistaken for melanometer. Nevus, small, simple, lots of drusen. A bigger nevus, again, okay? So see that, photograph it, check it again in a few months. If, if it's changing, definitely want to send it along. If it's not, you can either watch it yourself or discharge them. But finally, melanoma, okay? Lady, 56 year old, uh, piano teacher, I remember. Uh, orange pigment, fluid on the surface, measured I think about three millimeters uh, in thickness and had symptoms so she had the full house. And uh, uh, came along to see us. Unfortunately she later died of metastases, but that wasn't because of uh, any delay, but I uh, just remember for that. So again, this, this picture, I, I have to find some more photographs. Um, the guidelines are not meant to be prescriptive, okay, but they can uh, reduce, obviously, unnecessary referrals. Also, though, people get very anxious when they're, when they're coming to an oncology uh, clinic. Um, and also, unless they're coming over from Northern Ireland, uh, where they, there is some help in the payment, 
they uh, they have to foot foot the bill, okay? And travelling up from uh, a couple of hundred miles away is expensive, both in terms of lost I income and the actual uh, travel. So, you know, if the guidelines help to reduce those three things, then they're, then they're worthwhile. Okay. That's it. Thanks very much.